This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Thank God that in this crazy freezing cold we have this. Um, probably it's a, or that it's a merit from heaven or that the Creator just uh, can't stop himself from uh, hearing my classes. I don't know. The fact that I uh, know that Hashem Barachi loves me, it's not a secret. I have a clear evidence for that, that when I was probably six or seven years old, I watched Star Wars for the first time in my life as a secular kid. And I remember myself sitting and trying to lift things in the room with the force and I was I was 100% sure that I'm going to do it. I didn't have the slightest doubt that it's possible. And not because that I thought that that movie was a real movie because I believed that life got much more to it than okay, I need to go to school, okay, I need to go to back home, okay, I need to play with my friends. And and that desire that I had to to achieve certain things that were beyond the physical world that was known to me and that was uh, explained it to me by my parents that never spoke with me about spirituality, never spoke with me about the truth, poten true potential of, of the human being. But that knowledge, that wisdom was so installed so deep inside of me that I was talking to the Creator even without knowing that He exists. I, I never, I was not talking to oh, Hashem or God, Elohim, Borolam. I, I was just talking to Him, like, help me, I need to find, I, I was talking, I was looking for a salvation. And now, a person came to me, a person came to me a few days ago and, and spoke with me about the amazing, amazing supervision that he finds in his life, that he sees miracles and he sees wonders and amazing things are happening and taking place in his life. And he's telling me, I'm thinking that it's because I'm learning more Torah now. So, in my heart, I was not disrespecting his opinion and I was sure that Hashem can use the fact that you're learning Torah to to push you f forward and, and to to cheer you up and to tell you yes great continue if you're on the right path but to think that you have wonders and miracles because you're doing something that assumption is a mistake so in my heart I was laughing, but I was not laughing at him, Chas Shalom. I was laughing in my heart on how far is the people, how far people are from the real knowledge of who Hashem really is. I met a very special righteous man, a very unique righteous man, that told me a certain story that happened in his life. And he told me that he knows exactly why it happened to him. And he explained to me what was his mistake and that for two months he was going with that mistake and after those two months he'd been punished by Hashem. So, I, I, I reminded myself on, of that Mishnah, that the Mishnah is saying, that in the last generation, chutzpah tisgeh, that only by being chutzpah, how do you say chutzpah in uh, English, not in Yiddish? Brazen. How, what? Brazen. Brazen. I said to myself that the Mishnah is saying that only by being brazen you can go high, you can reach the heights. Chutzpah tisgeh, gonna lift you. So I took that on myself to be brazen, yes? And I told him that he's completely wrong. And that I'm asking his forgiveness, but if I can explain to him something that he's wrong 
about Hashem. And I'm talking about a very big righteous man, someone that I'm very scared of talking in front of him. But because that I know that that person is an amazing person that really desires the truth and wants Hashem with all of his heart. So I, I, I pushed myself, I forced myself to speak to him the truth from the heart. And I told him, you are relating Hashem to his judgments. You're connecting in your mind Hashem to his judgments. Yes, judgments hurt you. Judgments hit you. But you think that it is a punishment from Hashem on something that you did wrong. And that's a mistake. Yes, Hashem decided that that thing will happen. But to think that that is the will of Hashem, that Hashem now is furious, that Hashem is angry, it's to misinterpret Hashem. It's not to understand who the Creator really is. And people can go and cross their life years, tens of years, serving someone that is not really Hashem, only because they're not understanding completely who Hashem really is. Hashem is not His judgments. Hashem is not His anger. You can be a parent and you can lose your mind because of, of the behavior of your children and you can decide to punish them and inside of yourself you're gonna hate yourself on every second that you're being angry on your children. And there is nothing that can be worse for a parent than to punish his children. It's the worst situation in the world. A parent that just hit his child, that just said something awful to his child, he wants to go out from this world. He cannot stand his existence. He hates himself on that. And when we're going deep into the old scripts, into the Mishnayot, into the Gemarot, into the verses, and we're seeing that the Creator Himself is expressing His sorrow on His judgments and telling us that He regret on the fact that He punished us, that He exiled His children, and what the Father left with if He re rejected and exiled His children from His table. Malo le'av she'iglaid banav. He is admitting. I don't have anything in my life anymore after I exiled you. And the Tanah de Bilyao is saying to all of us that the Creator is look like a person that stands in an intersection. And in that intersection, He is reminding Himself that in that place, in that day, He exiled His wife. He divorced His wife. That's the Shekhinah Gdosha. And His children. Those are us. And every year He's coming and the Tana de Bilyao is saying, like, like a chicken, like a bird that comes and crying on her chicks that she lost. And the Creator is going every time to that place, to that intersection, and crying with a tearing eye. But Mistarim Tivken Afshi. And he's going to that hidden place that he's got and he's crying. And those two tears are going into the big sea, to the large sea, to the ocean. And we cannot understand the sorrow of the Creator that been caused to Him because that He exiled us. But what's the problem? Okay, you're the Creator, so take us back, accept us. There is a problem. And that's why I help that righteous man. And that's why I'm teaching you that lesson right now. That you're going to understand. That on the Creator it's written that He is Melech Asur Berhatim. That He is a king that is tied. That His hands are handcuffed to the edges of our mind, of our thoughts. He is a prisoner in our thoughts. That's how He created the world. We must set Him free in a way. It's our job. We have an obligation to understand who Hashem really is. And we're not getting it. That's why I'm teaching it, because I'm getting it, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you why I'm getting it. I'm getting it because I know that the Creator took me in from the complete darkness, not based on my good deeds, not based on my mitzvot, because I was not keeping none. 
I was not eating kosher, I was not keeping Shabbat, I was not doing anything properly. We were not celebrating the holidays, we were not guarding our eyes, we were doing everything wrong that could have been done. And especially when I became a teenager, the sky were the limit. I did everything that was not allowed to, but still Hashem decided to walk with me. And to send me those hints that are going to open my eyes and going to show me His unconditional love that even when I'm not worthy, even when I'm completely wrong, His compassion and His kindness are endless. And that's Hashem. Hashem is not His judgments. On His judgment, He regrets. And if you're going to say, okay, so what, you're saying that Hashem made a mistake? It's written in the verses, Vaitatsev el libo, that the Creator became sad. Vainachem al maasav, and he rethought, he thought again on his actions. He regret. Yes. What's the problem? I'll tell you what's the problem. That you're following people instead of following Hashem. That you're not asking yourselves who Hashem really is to me. You're just going to classes and you're listening to rabbis and you're opening books and you're talking with your friends and you're coming to conclusions or you're being forced to think in a certain way by your parents, by your company, by your communities, by your rabbis and you're following them. Oh, yes, whatever they're going to say, whatever they're going to say. But who are those people? Some of those people are people that still stuck with their own anxieties, with their own depression and sadness and fears. They themselves have not set themselves free yet to be real sparrows, to be real servants of the Creator, children of the Creator, real followers, warriors, fighters that are ready to die for Him. They have not accomplished that yet. And now they're going and teaching and you're buying that wisdom, and you think that that's the ultimate truth. So, you don't know what you're talking about. And you're thinking mistakes, and you don't understand. And now you go and you fall, you go and you fail, and then you start hating yourself and blaming yourself on your failures, based on the fact that you think, and you're imagining, you're just thinking that, it's not the truth. That Hashem hates you, that Hashem is punishing you, that Hashem is revenging you, that Hashem is not accepting your prayers, and you don't get it at all. That Hashem Barach himself is handcuffed, he himself is a prisoner in the exile, because he is shochen itam betoch tumotam. He is stuck with you in your contaminated places, and he cannot set himself free. Until a wise person will come and will atone for him. Now that righteous man that I spoke with him, I told him that thing, and he agreed with me. And he said, you're right. And then he said that he's doing tshuva. And he did tshuva. And I was so proud of him, even though that I'm nothing. I'm zero. But we're talking about a person, an older person, a real scholar, a talmid chacham, a righteous man. And that righteous man is able to do tshuva. And I told him, Hashem is proud of you. You're a real bal tshuva. And I'm talking to you about a real righteous man. But he was able to do tshuva. And people are afraid to do tshuva. But to do tshuva is to come to Hashem and to achieve completion. Because Hashem is telling us. And listen to that carefully. Hashem is saying, Shuvu elai v'ashuva elechem. If you will come back to me, I will come back to you. Okay, what does that mean? In the most flat way, if we will do keep his will, so he will come back to us. Okay, great, nice. But Hashem is using the word shuvu and ashuva. If you will come back to me, means you're going to do tshuva. You're going to regret. You're going to express your sorrow on the fact that you violated my will, you're going to confess, you're going to do tshuva, you're going to regret, you're going to apologize. And if you're going to do that, so Hashem is telling us, Ashuva elichem, I'm going to come back to you. But He's using the same phrase, the same word, tshuva. 
I'm going to come back to you. What? Hashem? Hashem is doing tshuva? So what us, what Am Yisrael are answering to Hashem Yitbarach? No, no, Hashem. Hashivenu elecha venashuva. Bring us back to you and we're going to come back to you. Why? We missed the main point. By being so, so called humble, telling Hashem, no, no, no. You don't need to do tshuva. We are going to do tshuva. We're going to come back to you. Bring us back. We lost the main part. Hashem told us, if you're going to do tshuva, I'm going to do tshuva. And we're telling Hashem, no, no, Hashem. Hashivenu elecha venashuva. Just bring us back to you. And by that, we're stopping the gates of tshuva from Hashem. We're blocking the gates of tshuva from Hashem. And what does it mean that Hashem needs to do tshuva? I'll explain to you. If now I upset you, I hurt your feelings. I did something wrong against you. And you, re- you, you feel bad. You're, you're, you, you, you feel horrible with yourself. You know, my friend hurt me. He did something wrong against me. I'm angry. And I will feel that. Next time I'll see you, you can look to me in a, in a sour face, in a bitter face. You're not going to be happy. I'm going to start thinking about my life. And I'm going to remember, oh, I did something wrong. I was talking about him, I was not listening to him, I ignored him, whatever I did was wrong. I will come to you and I'm going to apologize. If you're going to feel that my apologizing is real, you're going to forgive me. It's the nature of the world. That's how the creation works. You cannot hate me if I really did tshuva. If you're going to feel that I'm just like buttering you, Ah, you know, forgive me, sorry, and you feel that I'm, I'm in the same place, you're not going to forgive me. But if you will feel that I am sincere, that I am honest, that my apologizing is coming from a true, honest place, you will accept my tshuva. You're going to say, you know what, it's okay, I forgive you. And your heart will be clean. But what's going to happen if I'm going to keep on regretting, and I'm going to keep on telling you, listen, but I can't stand myself on doing that to you. I'm really apologizing. You don't know. Yesterday I was thinking about it and I felt so wrong and how could I do that to you? And you were so good to me and you helped me so much and I'm going to be honest. You will feel that I'm doing much more tshuva than I was supposed to. Who going to start feeling bad about himself? You. You're going to start feeling bad on the fact that you were angry at me in the first place. Even though that I was wrong and I was upsetting you and I hurt you, but the fact that I continued my tshuva and I made a complete tshuva and on top of that I made another step into that regret and I really completed and cleaned myself in front of you, you're going to start doing tshuva on the fact that you were upset. So that's what Hashem told us. Hashem told us, Shuvu Eli, Vashuva Alechem. When you're going to complete your tshuva, when you're going to come back to me completely, then I'm going to start feeling bad on my judgments. I'm going to regret on the fact that I was judging you in the first place. Because your tshuva is going to be so real, so truthful, that you're going to show to me again your good. You're going to remind me of your holy souls that I forgot about you. I forgot how precious and, 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 and amazing and awesome and fantastic and unique and beautiful you are. Hashem is saying, but when we're going to complete that tshuva and we're going to come back to Hashem with a complete heart, so then Hashem will come back to us and then you know what's going to happen? Something that everyone forgot about it. Everyone remembers the parashot, everyone remembers what happened in Bereshit, everyone remembers what happened in Shemot, in Vaikra, Bamidbar, Dvarim. Everyone remembers. Everyone remembers what happened in Pesach, everyone remembers that we went out of Egypt, that Hashem made Ototu Moftim, wonders that He was punishing the Egyptians, that He opened the sea, that we were walking in dry land. Yeah, everyone remembers the stories, but still all of those stories stuck on that board like like tales, like, like, like stories from the past. Do you believe that you're now standing in front of the ocean and suddenly the ocean is opening for you? So I'm telling you that when the redemption will come 
And when Mashiach will come, and when the big third temple will come down, made out of fire, down to earth, in the holy city of Jerusalem, what that will happen in the world is that nature going to be cancelled. And you're not going to take your children anymore to see the aquarium. You're going to go with them to the ocean and the sea will open for you and you're going to walk with your children to show them the large fish in the sea. And if they will be thirsty, so the sea will open those faucets that your children will be able to drink whatever they will want from the ocean while walking and enjoying and touring the big sea. Because Hashem will give us wings like the Midrash is saying. The people that were serving Hashem Barach will be able to fly. You will be able to fly and to go and to learn Torah in heaven and to come down. And that's what it's written in the Midrash. There will be no more nature in this world. People won't be sick anymore. No more sicknesses, no more weaknesses, no more death. No more lie, no more scams, no more betrays, no more, no nothing, no kind of darkness, no fears, no anxieties, no stress, no depression, no anger, no vicious cruelty, nothing. You'll be safe and happy and your children and your family and your relatives, everyone will praise the Creator and will be happy and singing and oh, another wedding and another child and everything gonna shine. And we forgot that. You know why we forgot that? Because we're stupid. We're following people instead of following the Creator. We're following rabbis and we're following books and we're following people and we're not stopping this craziness to feel, hey, but where in the world is Hashem? Where in the world is the Creator? He's hiding. He's hiding His face from us. He's hiding His face from us. Where is He? Where are you? How can a person go another day in his life without screaming, Hey! Where are you? What's going on here? What are all of those curtains? What's all of that darkness? I'm not going anywhere. When Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, here I'm sending my angels with you, they're going to take you to the promised land. Moshe told them, hey, hey, if you're not coming with us, we're not going anywhere. That's what Hashem said, Moshe said. When Hashem told Moshe, Heref mimeni v'ashmidem, leave me alone for a second, I'm going to kill them all. Moshe Rabbeinu learned one thing from the other and he realized, Hashem told me that if I'm going to leave him alone for a second, he's going to kill them all. Okay, from that I'm learning that if I'm not going to leave him alone for a second even, he won't kill them. So he did not stop. And he was begging and praying and crying and arguing and, and asking again and re-asking and wishing and hoping and convincing and bringing arguments and claims and evidence and proofs from earlier verses and from past situations from the past. And he was learning and arguing with Hashem to bring Hashem to regret. And then what Hashem is saying, Salachti ki dvarecha. I forgive them like you told me to. Why? Now you're going to blame Moshe on that wonder? I'm going to blame, blame Moshe's stubbornness, not Moshe himself. Because Maaseh Avot Siman Lebanim, the actions of our ancestors are coming to teach us. Not that, oh, we had that Moshe, Ve'aish Moshe, that man Moshe, he was so huge. That's not it. That's not the issue. That's not the main lesson. The main lesson is that you can ask yourself, when will my actions will be like the actions of my ancestors, of my rabbis? When I'm going to be like them? When I'm going to fight like them? When I'm going to go to the fields and scream to the Creator like them? When I'm not going to be scared like them? When I'm not going to be afraid to jump into the flaming fire like them? When I'm not going to be scared to say my opinion? To be who that I am. To fight against everyone and to say that I am good. That I'm a holy person. That I'm a good man. That I want only good. Why should I be afraid and scared to be who that I am? In this world that is full with lies. Lust and desires. Husks and coverings. That are blocking the light of truth. 
that what? That the Creator and His Torah and us are one unit. Now you have a problem that you don't get it. That you and Hashem are one. That you and the Torah are one. Not only when you keep it. Not only when you remember it. Your arm is your arm even if you forgot about it. Even if you're thinking with your, on, on something else, your arm will always going to stay your arm. You're a child of the Creator, even if you forgot that you are a child of the Creator. Even if you think that He forgot you. The truth is that He woke me up out of nowhere. He walked me my first baby steps into the Torah, into learning the truth, into understanding that I have a soul, that there is a world to come, that there is eternal life. I never knew those things. I had to learn all of those things when I was 20, when I was 21, 22, 23. Then I opened books of Torah in the first time in my life. 20 years of my life went in complete darkness. Watching more Hollywood movies and more series on the television and all kinds of, 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 of luxuries that a secular person have in his childhood. Never crossed my mind that there is a Creator. If you're going to offer me in that age to serve Hashem, to think about Hashem, I would laugh. It would be a joke for me. I wouldn't take it in the world. We were driving to the sea in Shabbos. We were driving, watching movies in Yom Kippur. We would watch 10 movies all Yom Kippur. Till the morning we would watch movies. That's how we would spend our Yom Kippur. Eating chips and drinking Coke. That's when I was a kid. I'm not going to tell you what I was doing when I was 18 in Yom Kippur. Who cared? Who was thinking about Torah? Who was thinking about the obligations, mitzvot, oh, you're obligated? Come on! You live only once. We were driving bikes, we were driving jeeps, we were doing drugs, we were smoking, we were doing everything, drinking, whatever, we were clubbing, tripping all around. And Hashem Barach is looking at you and waiting for the right moment to bring you back, to call you. No matter how low you went, how far you are, no matter how many sins you sin, how many sins you sin, how many sins you sin, me, myself, million, billion, I don't know, who is counting? How can I count? I cannot count. Do you think that Hashem Barach cares about it? Are you crazy? Don't you know what you feel to your child? Do you remember the past with your children? Do you ever check, look back? Oh, but when he was eight, I remember. When you were 12, I remember. That's a silly parent. That's a crazy parent. That's not a humble, loving, truthful, merciful father, parent. No, it's not. That's a crazy parent. The Creator He's looking on us with one eye of mercy. With Chad Eina Derachame, the Zohar Kadosh is saying. He's not looking at our sins at all. Verses are saying that, that he's not looking at our sins. So now it's not, it doesn't say that it permits you now to sin. The opposite. When you see that your father, he loves you so much, so then you want to serve him out of your will, out of your holy desire, you become much more loyal to Him when you're serving Him out of love than when you're serving Him out of fear. And I'm telling you something deeper. When you're serving Him out of fear, you're not serving Him. You're serving your fears. You're serving your own fears instead of understanding who He really is. Because I, even though that I felt many judgments, Many difficulties I had in my life. I went through huge humiliations in my life. Horrible moments. Hours that were terrifying. But I never felt that it was a punishment of Hashem. I never felt that I'm being punished. I felt that I need to go through that. I felt that there is a, uh, that it's cleansing me, that it's purifying me. I felt that there is a lesson. I felt the truth. I felt the rebuke cutting and scratching my flesh. I felt the pain of my sins, of my distance from Hashem. But to define it and call it as a punishment, 
Never. I never felt that. So why is it I'm going to think those horrible thoughts about my father, about the Creator, when the real only thing that I felt from him was his unconditional love? And you know what I know? I know that my prayer has been accepted. And I know that I received from heaven. And it can be maybe hard for some people to hear those words, but I couldn't care less about those people. I care about those ones that wants to hear. I know that my prayer has been accepted. And I know that I, in me, I got that gift from heaven that when I'm speaking to you, you're receiving the same power to make the same change in your life. I can see that in your faces. I can see that in your comments in YouTube, in your comments on Facebook. I can see that in my life, that my students, that my friends, their lives are changing because of my understanding. So now, when I see that the Creator made such a favor with me, not only to change my life, just also to take thousands of other people with me in the same journey and to make a change in their life, which change? Change to help them to become themselves. Not to become religious. Not to become from. I'm not looking for that. That's not my goal. You're never going to hear me telling you you should keep Shabbat and I'm keeping Shabbat. I'm never going to tell you you should eat kosher and I'm eating only kosher. I will never going to tell you go to the mikveh. I'm never going to tell you do. I, I'm never going to tell you what to do with your life. And why? Because I believe in you. I believe that when you will find yourself, you will run after Hashem. You don't need me to run after Hashem. You need me to find yourself. Because I found myself and I know who I am. That's why I'm not afraid. Because I know exactly who I am, so I'm also ready to die if I need to. Because I know who I am. I'm going with a happy heart and a wishing soul. I know what I'm doing in this lifetime. And I don't care if I'm going to fall, if I'm going to fail. I'm not scared from failures. Nothing can terrorize me. Only because that I feel complete with what that I'm doing. Because I thought about it. Because I was focusing in the purpose of my life. And I was thinking to myself, okay, what are you going to do with that? And what are you going to do with that? And because that I was so honest with myself and I found the real answers, so now I know the truth and you cannot take me away from it. But when you're following other people's advice without making the same investigation, so when you're going to see another person that will communicate a little bit better, that's going to have better arguments, you're going to follow him like the wind, changing your directions. From one path to the other. Oh, today I'm Chabadnik and now I'm Breslev. And no, oh, this I'm decided, now I'm going to be this. What, what, what does it mean I'm going to be, I'm going to be? You need to be yourself. Who are you? If you're not a Breslever, so you're not a Breslever. If you're not Chabadnik, so you're not Chabadnik. If you are Moshe or Aaron or Simcha or Feige or Rivka or Esther, so that's who you are. So be Esther. So just be Moshe. So just be Aaron, be who that you are, be happy. <coughs> no matter who you are, you have and you're carrying it inside of your heart, a godly particle, a soul that is divine, that came down from heaven, <laughs> part of the Creator Himself is installed inside of you, planted inside of you, got roots into your hands, into your fingers, into your legs, into your knees, into your lungs, into your kidneys, into your heart. The Spirit of the Creator is hovering above you and filling you from inside. You are the child of the Creator. You don't need me. You need Him in your life. So you need to find the real Him, not the one that I'm going to describe, not the one that that righteous man described in his book. That book's supposed to give you an inspiration to find the Creator in your life. To me, he was hinting on certain things. With you, he's going to communicate in a different language because you're different. So he's going to use your language, your vocabulary, your slang, your way of thinking, 
And He's going to hint you. He's going to send messages to you. He's going to wake you up to find Him in your life. I found Hashem while watching videos, while watching m m movies. I literally found Hashem in movies. Maybe for you it's not good. I hear you. Don't watch movies. To me, for me, it was the salvation. There are people that cannot find Hashem without drugs. Cannot. Other people using drugs will kill them. You need to know. You need to know yourself. You need to know yourself. That's Mechat Amid. You should understand who you are. There are people that without having great habits and, and, and schedule every day, waking up in the same hour, they won't be healthy. There are other people that if you need to put them into a certain routine, they will die. They cannot. They cannot. They cannot be forced to no kind of system. No system will, 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 will put them in, 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 a, in a shape, in a, in a brick, in a pattern. No. They're free. They're meant to be free. They cannot be limited. What are you going to do with them? You need to let him be. You must let him be. So you must let yourself be who that you are. To be yourself, to find your true self. So I'm telling you that people that are guiding you, those teachers, those rabbis, those parents, they don't have enough faith in you if they are guiding you and rebuking you and telling you what you should do with your life. They don't have enough faith in you. But I have faith in you and I'm sure that if you will be enough honest with yourself, you will find that you are a holy soul. Why that righteous man was connecting the Creator with his judgments like I explained to you before? Why when he saw that the Creator made something with judgments, so he interpret, he explained it to himself that Hashem is angry. That Hashem is punishing. Why? Because even when he is doing something wrong, so he's blaming himself on that. He's still not clean to understand that the judgments took over his real will. That he fell in that trap of the evil inclination to run his life with judgments instead of being always kind and always patient and to love everyone and to respect everyone and to have endless patience, endless patience, endless, endless like the ocean, endless like the sky that you're never angry, that you're never upset, that you never curse no one, that you never blame no one, that you're just breathing. When you're angry, you're breathing, you're learning to believe. Kach Hashem would say, Hashem is talking to me, that's what Hashem wants. I'm breathing, I'm learning faith. Instead of explaining and rebuking and showing and arguing and fighting and bringing evidence and verses and... Who are you fighting with? Fighting with yourself and in the end hating yourself on that. And in the end, 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 not even understanding the real nature of the world, who Hashem really is. And losing your mind. Losing your mind because you lost in the battle against your fears against your stress. But if you're going to fight to be who that you really want to be, who that you remember that you are in your essence, in the nature of your creation, to be only good, you're going to win. And then you're not only going to win for yourself, you're going to win for thousands of other people as well. And you're going to open the path of tshuva for thousands of people that will be inspired by you. And you don't need to be an inspiring speaker for that. You don't need to go and give classes for that. You can be a role model even if you just run a store or working in a factory. You can be a very holy person, a real righteous man, even if you're going to be hidden and no one's going to know your name.
Your prayers can open gates for thousands of people that never going to see you in their lifetime. But in the world to come, they will be counted as your children. That they achieved life, eternal life in the world to come only because of your prayers, because of your effort, because of your sweat, because of your tears, because of your truth. When Avraham Avinu believed in Hashem, Hashem was counting his faith as charity. He did not took one quarter out of his pocket. One penny he didn't took out. He just believed in Hashem. But his faith already made wonders in the world. Because charity, Tzedakat Atzil Mimavet, saves from death. He was saving people from death just by believing in Hashem. You go and you just believe. Just believe. And you don't know what you're doing. Now there's two, there are two cars that did not make a car accident. And you're never going to hear about it. No one's going to know. They for sure not going to know. They're not going to thank you. You won't receive no thank you letters. No respect for you. Sorry. But you saved their lives right now. Their children are going to see their face because, today, because you had faith. And you don't know that. You just walked with Hashem. And those children will see their father again because of you. And you don't know that. Why you don't know that? Because Hashem, He knows that you don't have the vessels to understand who you are and what is your power. Too much power, too much knowledge is going to make you crazy. You're going to lose your mind if you're going to understand how important you are, how precious you are, how amazing you are. When you say to Hilim, when you read verses, when you're crying to Hashem, when you're learning, when you're being nice to people, you know what it means to be nice, just to smile to a person? The verse is saying, Malbin When you're smiling, it's even greater than giving some person, poor person, to drink milk, to feed him. Now we were talking on faith that is equal to charity. But now we heard that to smile to a person is even higher than to give charity. So it's even higher than to save life of a person. To smile to someone, it's even higher than to save someone's life. Means that it's creating in the world something that is even greater than that that father will come back home to his child. You just smiled for a second. You just shown your teeth to a person. You just smiled to him. Hi, how are you? What's going? Welcome. What's going on, Achi? <laughs> you don't know what you're doing in the world. You don't know the power of a smile. That's Hashem. That is Hashem. Hashem is that one that is able to put in your smile the power to revive the dead, to give life. To, to the world, that thousands of trees are going to grow in South America and you don't know, will be a shelter for squirrels, for, for, for owls, for deers, for animals. And you don't know that you're growing nature. You don't know that you are making the birds sing in the morning. You don't have a clue who you are. Because you woke up this morning with a smile and the creation will sing because of you. You are singing. Through those birds, through those animals that are now happy and finding food and a place to hide in the winter, in the rain. And it's because that you took one person to your house and thousands of deers found a place to hide from the freezing cold. And you don't know that. That you protected those thousands of thousands of animals and fish in the sea. And flowers are growing and blooming and smells all around and waters and river and whatever and you don't know who you are and you go with your face down Hashem is angry at me how crazy you don't know what's going on you don't know what you can do what you can make with your change you think that you're a fool you don't know give it to a charity now here now it's written to the katatil mimavet it's it written do you believe in that verse now I gave charity so charity will save from death? Okay, great. Now, I did it again. 
So charity will save from death, right? You believe in that, right? And now, again, do you believe that I saved now three people or three porcupines from being run by a truck? Is it worthy? Fourth one. Do you believe? I just saved a bird from drowning in the lake. A duck from freezing in the, in the ice. Do you believe in that? Do you believe? I did now four times charity. I gave charity four times. And on that it's written four times, Tzedakat Atzil Mimavet, will save from death. One person in India, his life has been saved right now. Do you believe? I do. That's why I'm happy. Because I know that I saved four lives right now. It can be a squirrel, it can be a person, it can be a huge rabbi. I don't know. I don't care. I would be happy enough to save a, a, a bee from drowning in the swimming pool of that billionaire that lives across the street. I'm happy. If I saved one life, do I care who it is? I'm happy. I did my thing. I was who that I am. And I'm happy. And I'm proud to be. To believe in yourself and to find your true self, it's to believe in the power of the Creator. To see your beauty, it's to see the beauty of the Creator. You don't need to have a f beautiful face. You need to have a beautiful soul. Your soul should shine. How it's going to shine? Only when you will feel comfortable with who that you are. And if you're going to laugh. And if you're going to talk. And if you're going to tell. And if you're going to share. And if you're going to be. If you're going to express your real being. Then Hashem's light that is treasured inside of you will shine to the world. And then you will see how great Hashem is through you. You cannot see how great Hashem is through me. It's not enough for you. For you, the real lesson is to find Hashem in your life. That your prayers will be answered. That you will see that Hashem can open the sea for you. That you will see the wonders of Hashem. That when you're going to hear that that woman, she's so sick, you're going to go and break walls for her. That you're going to pray, to turn the, the sky for, to, to parts, to shreds. You won't leave one spot like Moshe Rabbeinu that you're not going to shoot arrows of, 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 of prayers to those points, to those places. Because you believe like Moshe. That Hashem is with you like that He was with Moshe. Because of Moshe? No. Because of Moshe's character. Because of Moshe's stubbornness. Because of Moshe's dedication to the truth. He heard that Hashem is real. He heard that there is Hashem. He grew up and realized that there is Hashem in the world, so he went and for 60 years he was calling Hashem from the desert of Sinai and screaming to Hashem to redeem Am Yisrael, to redeem his nation, to save them under the hand of Pharaoh. For 60 years, only when he was 80 years old, starting that process when he was 20, only when he was 80, Hashem revealed himself first time in the burning bush and told him, first of all, get rid of your contaminated body and I'm going to make wonders for you. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to set them free. Hashem promised him. After 60 years of Moshe Rabbeinu screaming to the walls, shooting prayers to the sky, for 60 years he was screaming to heaven, investing another coin, another coin, another coin, another minute, another hour, another day, another week, another month, another year, another 10 years, another 20 years, another 30, 60 years he was praying in the desert for the complete redemption. Now do you want redemption? Okay. So for me alone, it will take 60 years. But if you're going to join me, so immediately it's 30 years. And if also you're going to join us, so we're much better. And if 20 people are going to join us, it can take place today if you're going to listen to his voice. Hayomim bekolot
now, right now. It can take place right now. Right now. What's the problem? No judgments anymore. Everyone are happy, healthy, good news. You have your house in Sfat. You have your villa in Jerusalem. Oh, you got that house. Oh, the 40 million, it's yours. Yes, no problem. Okay, I did my part. You cannot blame me on not trying. I love you. I bless you to succeed. Help us, support us, support our amazing activities. We're a non-profit organization. You can have uh, your taxes back if you want. So, Hashem bless you. Always to be happy, to believe in yourselves, and to make wonders in the world. Thank you very much. Chazak we hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.